Hey guys, did you know that there is a secret relationship problem that sabotages your ability to connect with somebody? It's called anxious attachment style and it can screw things up for you even if you do everything else right. Yes, you can be the perfect partner and you can still have things blow up in your face because of the secrets your partner is keeping. So are you ready to learn to spot it so you can stay safe? If so, great. I'm Adam Lane Smith, the attachment specialist, and I am here to help you today. Really quick, a big thank you for all of you members who just joined my YouTube memberships. This is something totally new that I absolutely appreciate your support for. It helps me keep producing all the videos on this channel, right? I just crossed 450. I can't wait to keep going. Your support makes that possible. So thank you so much. And if you are just joining the channel today, welcome. I am glad that you're here. Today, we're going to explore anxious attachment style and why you might actually be attracted to it. In fact, why it is the one thing you're gonna keep pulling in and one of the most dangerous things for you long-term. So in this, in this series, we're gonna explore the dance between some men and anxious women, specifically avoidant men. We'll talk about that here in a little bit. This is part one of a series about what to do about this big threat and how you can stay safe in your relationships. If you're afraid of a nasty divorce down the line, this video and the series is gonna take care of you. All right, guys, so let's get right into it. To know the issue, you need to understand the issue. So what is anxious attachment style? You've probably heard a lot of things on the internet. Many of them are probably wrong. Anxious attachment style is the belief that there is something wrong on the inside of that person. Something from childhood, they came to believe nobody else can ever love them. That there's something wrong there that everyone else in fact can see if they ever open up so they can never open up. They have to put up a perfect, happy cardboard cutout on the outside that is always good, always perfect, always accommodating, always earning approval so that you never get to the inside of who they really are. There's a lot of self-doubt. There are they, they believe that problem is in them so they can never open up and never fix it. It's unfixable. And they are so eager to please you guys. Living to please is the entire purpose of their life. In fact, they are totally addicted to approval. Sometimes like a drug. We're going to talk about that a little bit later, but they are addicted to your approval, to your time, to your validation, to your focus. It is a drug to them. Now, there are huge problems that come with this. They, they cannot believe in themselves. They actually feel helpless. They feel like good relationships will never happen for them, only to them. They have to go around and look for other people to help. Codependency is really big in this group. Codependency is about needing to be needed. You need the other person to need you because otherwise they'll abandon you. Fear of abandonment is the number one thing for this group. They believe they deserve to be abandoned, so they're going to be. And perfectionism is huge in this group because only being perfect, right? The perfect cardboard cutout, that's the only thing they know to do. This is what makes them feel safe. And there's a big, big problem that you probably already see coming. Now guys, really quick, drop into the comments, please. And let me know, have you ever dated a girl like this before? I want to hear. I know there's a lot of women watching this too. And I would love if you would pop in and say, hey, you know what? I think I know somebody like this. Maybe it's you, right? This is a big problem. Anxious attachment style, the research shows about 20% of the population likely has this, about one in five. Please drop it in those comments. Let me know if you've seen this before. Now, why is anxious attachment issues a problem in relationships, right? It's just them. They're hurting. They're sad. They're lonely. Okay. Why is it a problem when they connect to you? It's because they keep their needs a secret. They don't believe that they deserve to have their needs met. In fact, if they ask for them, you're going to say, whoa, you're not worth that. And you're going to get up and leave them. That's the fear because nobody else took their needs seriously in childhood. They're going to do 10 nice things for you instead and hope that you are so happy that you figure out their needs and go meet them for them. You'll read their mind. And in fact, they probably will deny it if you ask, hey, do you want this thing? No, 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 I, that's totally fine. I don't need that at all. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. That's what they want from you. They expect you to try to read their mind. At first, when you don't do what they wanted to, they blame themselves. Oh, it was my fault. I must not deserve it. I need to keep doing things. Like, I, okay, that's fair. I don't deserve it. Then they do 10 more nice things and then 10 more nice things and 10 more nice things. And then the resentment starts and then they start blaming you. They get really, really needy in the meantime. Why aren't you doing these things for me? It must be because I'm bad. They get super needy. They chase you. They start chasing your validation all the time. They start obsessing over you. They spend their day waiting around you. They, they wait for you to get off work. And if you're a few minutes late texting them, <gasps> why did you leave me? Did I do something wrong? Everything is, what did I do wrong? Every time you try to contact them, it's what did I do wrong? And when you don't contact them fast enough, what did I do wrong, right? Over time, as their resentment boils up, 
they start to make you the villain. They start to say, I have done all these things for you for all this time. Why don't you care? You must not care. Eventually, it's not my fault. It must be you. They often, if you have kids with them, at this point, they can start alienating your kids from you. They can start pulling your kids away. They start triangulating. I can't trust you. I don't feel safe with you. These are the people that are likely to start saying, I don't feel safe with you when you've never, ever done anything to hurt them. I don't feel safe with you is code for you don't do what I want you to do. Over time, if you stay with these people, they can really start to ruin your life. These are the people that make you the bad guy. You've probably heard about anxious attachment style before in the context of, oh, you poor thing. Isn't it so awful? Then they demonize people with avoidant attachment. This is why like 90% of the material on the internet about avoidant attachment is you are evil and you're horrible and oh, poor anxious people. And, and, and I am sympathetic, but that's why I'm making this series is because there are very few people talking about the dangers of anxious attachment style and how they very much contribute to the problem. So the question here is, why are you attracted to these people? Well, there's something here called avoidant attachment style that I've said a couple of times. Avoidant attachment style is kind of the opposite. If they blame themselves, they say people didn't take me seriously in childhood, it must be because something's wrong with me. Avoidant attachment style says, People didn't take me seriously, or they didn't take care of me, or I was left to my own, or people hurt me, or just people were kind of unpredictable. So I built kind of a wall. I keep people out. I take care of myself. I can only rely on myself. Some avoidant people, yes, they stay away from other people. They're just cool. They, they chill. That's great. Some of them are very manipulative. Those are the ones that you usually read the bad information about online. They're very manipulative. Other pieces. That's probably not you. If you're watching this, trying to learn, you probably just stay away from other people. You probably believe that other people are not going to play fair with you. What I call act in good faith with you, mutual fulfillment. They are going to be more selfish, especially when they get stressed out, right? So you probably try to solve all your problems alone. You probably have very tactical thinking in relationships. Taken to the extreme, this is manipulation, but it's usually like, hey, I'm going to do these things. You're going to feel good. That's going to keep your mood high. You won't go crazy on me later, right? Very tactical. They also know how to make people happy. Again, could be manipulation, could just be amping up their mood so that they don't go crazy, right? You probably know how to make people happy. This is very tactical and distanced from other people. And this is avoidant attachment style. You could, and some avoidant people are, become a people pleaser to stay safe and to bank goodwill. You can have some of the similar characteristics on the outside of an anxious person who's people pleasing, but they do it because they are hedging their bets against the day they are revealed as an unlovable fraud and everyone abandons them. You might be doing it because you just try to keep people sane and reasonable by making sure their mood is at least stable. Maybe you're grown up, maybe your adults when you were a child weren't stable, so you try to keep these people stable. Anxious people, to you, probably seem fairly easy to manage, as long as you keep them right about here. Their needs are really obvious. They are so lonely and so insecure. A pat on the head is like $10 million to them. At first... They are really eager to please. And, and it can it can be so cool slipping into a relationship as an avoidant person with an anxious person. Because at first, they kind of play all the things that you wouldn't expect people to do. They are so generous and eager to please and low drama at first. They do everything for you and ask nothing. It's like, wow, what a breath of fresh air. This person is so happy to please me. They're so kind. They cook for me. It's sex on the first date and every single night. And they're constantly eager. And wow, this is kind of cool. And it feels good. And you think nobody would do this if they didn't want to, so it's okay. It feels good to you to have someone cater to you, right? It feels good to be catered to. They also seem like pretty good people because they're not trying to take from you. And they don't get too close to you, right? They don't want to be seen on the inside. They think something's wrong with them, right? But you don't also want people to get too close to you because you can't trust people to get in that close. That's avoidance. You avoid they, neither one of you gets to get too close to the other one at first. So they give a lot and they don't push your boundaries. At the first, the first six months, that's great. It, it feels wonderful. The first six months of a relationship, tons of dopamine and happy, love, love. Great. It's the long-term game that starts to get really ugly where this falls apart. Now, heads up, you are usually good for that first six to seven months. It's really the six to seven month mark where things start to change. Requirements change. They want things from you. Their, their stress goes up. You start to see them act differently. Around one year, 
they start to really change and the pressure gets bigger and bigger on you so that you start feeling a little bit smothered, a little bit overwhelmed. It feels like you're trapped and you won't know what to do. You're going to start hoping they can go back to that mode and be lower drama. You're going to keep trying to play this game and soothe them, hoping that eventually they will figure out how to soothe themselves. They probably won't, most likely, unless they do some work, which if you're in this relationship, they often don't. The majority of these relationships don't work out. And we'll talk about that in a future video. But you're going to start feeling smothered around the seven month mark and really at that one year mark. And you're going to make some difficult choices. All of them are going to hurt. I'm going to show you how to fix that but all of them are going to start hurting. So here's what I need you to know right now. These people become extremely dangerous to your mental health around one year into the relationship. It's going to feel great at first. You're going to think that Adam is, is just losing his mind. He's making stuff up. Okay. One year in, you're going to be calling for help. <laughs> That's why in this next video, in this playlist, I'm going to teach you why anxious women are toxic for avoidant men, why they are your worst enemy. Don't miss that video because you need to know this pattern to stay safe.